Welcome to another edition of Dad's Divorce Live. I'm Sean Garrison, your host and editor of dadsdivorce.com. Today we are joined by Christopher Emanuel. Christopher is an unmarried father in South Carolina who recently nearly lost custody of his daughter and had his parental rights taken away from him by the state's adoption system. Christopher was only able to regain custody of his child because he had registered with the state's responsible father registry. Otherwise, his daughter would have been adopted without him even receiving notice. Christopher's story was profiled in The Atlantic, and he recently wrote an editorial in The New York Times about why single fathers should receive notice about adoptions. Now, Christopher, when you first found out that you were going to be a father, uh, you and your girlfriend had planned on staying together, and she repeatedly assured you that you were going to be involved in your daughter's life no matter what happened. Uh, but eventually you found out that her parents didn't want the two of you to stay together because of your race, and you gradually noticed her becoming more and more distant and uh, just kind of pushing you out of her life. Uh, can you describe the emotions you felt through that whole experience as you just started to notice that things were going wrong? Well, let me just give you a, a background of where I'm from so you can kind of understand how I, you know, was able to deal with the situation. Um, as we know, my name is Christopher Emanuel. I'm a 25-year-old African-American, single father man, single father from Aiken, South Carolina. And I was raised with the village of family members where God and family is key. And the egg donor and I, we started out as friends and we became lovers. Um, there wasn't anything we didn't discuss, pros and cons. However, this was the outcome. It was hard to accept at first, but through God, my family, my close friends, my pastor, um, my, my attorney, Jennifer Mook, I'll make a Nicholas Graham, King Skyler, I learned to deal with the situation. I accepted God's plan. Encountering, encountering racism is like somebody going behind you, pushing hand in the water. You know, I never encountered such racism, such evil. Um, but upon my mother and I leaving her parents' home, the egg donor reassured me we would continue to raise, you know, our, our child together. And I felt relief knowing my daughter wouldn't be raised in the environment to hate her complexion or others like her. But just this, this, that, that moment of just knowing everything was going to be all right was, was, was all I needed. Love can be blinding, man. It really can. Oh, my goodness. All I could think about was her well-being and, and, them, and them being okay. And I found out on February the 22nd with that notice of adoption proceedings. And, you know, I didn't want to really believe it, you know. I couldn't focus. All I could think about was my daughter's well-being. Are they taking care of my child or are they loving my child? Like, what's going on? What does she look like? And, you know, immediately I asked the hey, egg donor, you know, send me a picture. And you know what she did? She sent me a picture, multiple pictures, of her holding our daughter at that time. And, you know, I was like, you have to emotionally detach yourself from a child, to carry that child for nine months, to give your child to complete strangers that I have no idea about where they're from, what they're doing, their morality, how they were raised, nothing. So it was a complete moment of, it was more than shock. You know, all I had to think about was my daughter, shock. Yeah, I can only imagine. And although your daughter, uh, she was ad actually adopted by a couple, you were eventually able to regain custody because you had registered with the state's responsible father registry. Uh, had you not done this, your girlfriend would have been able to give your daughter up for adoption without you being notified, and you would have had not a single option of recourse. Um, based on your experience, can you explain how these registries work, uh, how you learned about them, and why it was you decided to register? Um, let me just be clear. My daughter was never legally adopted. They stole my daughter. Okay. Now, the South Carolina Paternal Father Registry is in only 33 states. It gives an unmarried father the opportunity to assert their rights for any child they may have fathered. And you can go on um, sc.gov.dss father registry. And all you need is the partner's information, 
to conception date, birth of child, when the baby um, is supposed to be born, and the name of the child. Just in my case, my half sister Chelsea McNabb and her best friend Jill Thomas had told me about the registry. So that's how I found out about it. I was kind of skeptical at first, like I said. I loved her. I loved her. And, you know, I didn't want to necessarily believe it. Something ain't right. And um, once I registered, I was able to assert my rights, but it didn't give me custody because now I have to prove fraternity. I have to prove my character. I have to prove that I am financially capable and able of taking care of my child. And also I had to have a home study to show that I have a safe and loving environment for my child. So despite father registry being in only 33 states, if a father registers um, with these predatory and unethical adoptions, they can still try to strip you of your rights. And if it's mind blowing, it's human trafficking. You should have never, you should have never had my daughter. I registered on February the fourth. She was notified on the thirteenth. I got served the ninth day out of ten days with an improper notice. They changed the venue without even notifying me. They didn't notify my attorneys or, or me. They didn't even add me to the case. You know, I'm grateful that they did take care of my child, but this could have been avoided. You just stole my child when you clearly knew I was capable and willing and more than interested of raising my daughter. There's no greater human right than that of a father's child. There isn't. Sure. Well, it certainly sounds like a situation that could have been avoided. Uh, but to elaborate on these registries, they're actually designed to secure a prompt and stable placement for adoptive children. Um, in your situation, they actually ended up working to protect your parental rights in a sort of roundabout way. Uh, but one of the big problems with these registries is that very few people even know that they exist. Um, and so there are a lot of unmarried fathers who might want to stay involved in their children's lives, just as you did, uh, who don't even know that they're supposed to register. Um, in your opinion, do you think that these registries, uh, that the system is fair and efficient, or are there ways that this can be improved so that the rights of unmarried fathers like yourself are better protected um, while, while also looking out for the best interests of adoptive families? Um, I firmly believe that adoption is for children without families, not children with a willing and capable family. As I was saying, if a father asserts his rights, he can still be stripped of those unethical and predatory um, adoptions. And this doesn't just affect fathers, but, you know, mothers as well. You know, couples pay a lot of money for these adoptions. And if you have to pay for a child, you are contributing to a form of human trafficking. You cannot put a price on life. Why are there laws in place to prohibit a capable, able, and willing parent of raising their child? We live on offspring. It's all about the kids. You know, I understand certain situations, but there should definitely be a national registry and me being a tester. And for any couple that's looking to adopt a child without a family, still take that initiative to make sure that there isn't an interested father or mother, whatever the case may be, because they're dead, these moms too. You know, I'm not trying to be biased, but in my case, yes, it did work out for me, and I'm grateful but they don't advertise this. They don't. So it's up to, this is just the beginning, it's up to us to continue to educate fathers, especially if they're interested in showing that initiative to assert their rights, but it doesn't give them custody, so they have to, you know, stay, they have to stay on it, despite whether the mother wants to talk to them or not. They have to be aggressive. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Christopher, and your willingness to share your story with us. Uh, we really enjoyed having you here on Dad's Divorce Alive. Oh, it's my pleasure. You have a great one. To read more about Christopher's story and how the adoption system can affect unmarried fathers, visit dadsdivorce.com. That'll do it for another edition of Dad's Divorce Alive. This has been Sean Garrison, editor of dadsdivorce.com. We'll see you next time.